Good morning. Good morning. Do you want to pray, Val? Father, we thank you for this new day, for your grace and mercy, new and fresh this morning. We pray that we might hear what you're saying to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ephesians 2. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. is that amazing? Wonderful. It's a sort of combination of God's sovereignty and my free will. I have to fit in <laughs> with, with what God has, God has planned. Do you remember yesterday we were talking about the life of, of Saul? And Paul. Oh, yes. And so he had all that preparation within himself, within his story, his education, his character, his talents, his abilities, and his skill with making tents. <laughs> so all of that stuff was in his life, but he had to be released and commissioned into this new life. God prepared works for him to do, but he had to walk in them. It's a it's interesting, isn't it? It's just the same for everybody in a sense, you know. And that didn't come naturally to sure. Saul, did it? For sure. No, it was almost like the last thing on his mind. Yes. Yeah. I often use the example of the Damascus Road. Yes. When we're praying for somebody and it feels like it's just not going to happen. We actually pray, don't we, for a Damascus Road experience yes, for yeah. that person. Yes, that's right. I need to come to the end of myself my pride needs to be really broken i need to submit and then to hear but then i'm released into in a whole new adventure that i couldn't have possibly imagined something wonderful yes that's right it's it's the amazing effect of of grace in some senses you're the same person you always were but grace takes what you were he, he molds your aggression into strength of character and your or my manipulativeness <laughs> into strategy or wisdom and my lust into loving admiration you know the things that were negative have now been transformed into a positive because God's prepared works for me to do wow you know, remember that old song where it says, God has um, works for you to do, none but you can do, type of thing. Lovely, yeah. yes. Yes, yeah. I suppose you could see that in the amazing transformation of Saul to Paul. Yes, yes. In some senses, he's the same man. In some senses, he's just totally, totally different, made what, new. What were yeah. you saying about the things that he tried to do wickedly? yes. Well, it's all connected with that word zeal, that word zeal. It says, and do you remember it said of Jesus, uh, uh, zeal for uh, the Lord's house has consumed him. In the same sense, there was a zeal in, in, Paul, in Saul as he was, and the zeal led him to destroy Christians. But the same passion, let's just transfer the word zeal into passion and enthusiasm, made him such an effective evangelist and teacher and missionary and church planter just just he just exploded into the first century but it's the same zeal which was misdirected into persecution became redirected and transformed into mission lovely yeah. yes yes i can see that and maybe this is the way god works with us well certainly if you look back into the old testament what happened with moses as well Yes, yes, all that planning and training. He got it, he, yes, and then he tried to take things into his own hands, again became a murderer, like Saul. For sure, how interesting. And yeah. it all went wrong. So he comes to the point of submission where God says, take off your shoes, and he said, I've, I've heard the voice of my people Israel, I've come down to rescue them, and you're going to do it. And he says, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he, he has to come to the same point of submission, but then be released into the same kind of adventure of liberation. That's really encouraging, yeah. isn't it? Because sometimes we we seem to get to a place where 
we've not only lost our pride, but we've lost our will as well. Or our way, yes, good. And, and we think that we haven't got anything to do because we haven't got anything to offer. But this scripture here yeah. reminds us that God has prepared, prepared workmanship. good works for us. Do you remember the man in Mark chapter 5, the the man who was filled with the thousands, thousands of demons and, and he wanted to follow Jesus? And Jesus said, no, no, now that you are clean, now that you are free of all those addictions, all those compulsions, go back and tell them what God has done for you. And this is why people who are really saved make them be the best evangelists because they know what they're talking about. Yeah. Yes, with yeah. such a amazing deliverance experience thank you jesus yes thank wonderful. you lord yeah yeah thank you lord lord we just lift up this scripture to you we thank you lord that we are your workmanship we thank you for that that translation that says uh, we are god's masterpiece yes and that you are the master artist and you are making something out of our lives that we couldn't imagine. We thank you for your grace and your patience and your gentleness and your oh strong hand on our lives. We love you, Lord. And Lord, we pray that we may be responsive to your leading, that we may hear your voice, that we may notice where you're directing us and just walk quietly and humbly and excitedly <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> where you call us in jesus name we pray mm. amen amen